Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to chain multiple blocks together in your workflow so that the output of one block can be used inside of a prompt in another block. It's very easy and it's a core concept that you're going to want to know if you're building more intricate workflows. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see here that I am inside of an AI agent and this AI agent is a blog post generator and it looks very similar to other agents that we've created. It has a user input that takes in the user input topic. That topic is saved as a variable and we are generating our long form article about that topic and we've also provided some instructions on response formatting and example outputs. Now what we want to do is we want to make this a little more advanced and provide it additional information also generated by AI. And in order to do that, we're going to add another generate text block here in the middle and it's going to do some processing in the background. So let's go ahead and add another generate text block. And in this case, we want the AI agent to do a little bit of thinking before it actually generates the blog post. So we can provide it a prompt that says something like brainstorm and outline and key topics that should be covered when writing an article about the following topic. And then we're going to provide the topic in those tags like we learned and use the double curly braces to select our variable topic. And so what this is going to do is exactly what we've instructed it to do, which is create an outline and come up with some key topics for our actual article that we're going to be writing. This is going to give it a little more context and a little more direction as it goes down the workflow. Now, in order to use this inside of the next block so that we can provide that context, we actually have to save this as a variable. And the way that we do that is by changing the output behavior. Now you can see here in settings that there is this section called output behavior. And right now that output behavior is set to display to user. When it's set to display to user, it's going to show up on the screen when a user uses this AI agent. And instead of doing that, we want to save it as a variable. So we're going to switch it to save to variable. Now we will name our variable and we'll call this uh, key points. And, and we can use this in other places in our workflow in, if we'd like. Anywhere in the workflow, we can use it variables multiple times in our workflows if we'd like to. But what's going to happen is the output of that AI agent is going to be saved to the variable. So now we can use this variable where I'm going to copy it later on in our workflow. And we're going to do that inside of the block that actually generates the blog post. So here in between the task and the response formatting, I am going to add an additional instruction. Make sure that you follow the outline and cover key topics mentioned below. And then we will include some other tags called key topics and we'll close those tags out. And then we will include our variable inside of those tags. So now we're providing it the initial topic and we are putting in the, uh, the key points here. And actually let me change this to points so we don't get confused. Instead of calling it key topics, we're going to call it key points. So there we go. Just like that, when we run this workflow, what's going to happen is it's going to do some processing in the background, and then we're going to feed that response into the next response. And you can do this over and over. You can do this with all sorts of different blocks. It's uh, the way that many of the blocks work, where they will generate a variable that you have to use later in the workflow. So the other part to enhance our blog post generator that we can add is maybe we want to have a cover image for our blog post. So the way that we do that is we're going to use a similar process. Let me go ahead and move some blocks around so that we don't get confused. I'm going to move these start blocks up. We're going to move the generate text blocks up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another block here that's going to use the output of the blog post to generate an image. 
Now to do that, we're going to simply add a generate image block. And this generate image block is going to require an image prompt. So all that means is we're giving it instructions on what to generate for us, right? So because this value is dynamic, we actually are going to need AI to analyze the blog posts that we generated and then generate an image prompt. So we're going to use that exact same process. I'm going to move these down a little bit and we're going to add another generate text block here. And this generate text block is going to create the image prompt for us. So I'm going to type something in like generate an image prompt that can be used by an AI image model. And we're going to say make it about the following blog post. And then we can add the tags blog post and we'll close those tags out blog post. Now the blog post right now, we don't have a variable for, so just like before, we're going to change this value instead of being displayed to user to be saved to a variable. And we're going to call that variable blog post. Now we can simply copy that and use it inside of these double curly braces, just like we've been doing the rest of the workflow. So let me quickly add a couple of labels here. So the first label we're going to add is, uh, write blog post. And then we're going to add another label. And this label is going to say generate image for blog post. Maybe we change the, the color for this. And now the last thing that we're going to want to do is display all of this content together. And in order to do that, we can uh, display the content using the display content block. Now, actually, one thing I'm going to back up for one second. One thing I forgot to do here is we're going to take this uh, image prompt and we are going to save it to a variable called image description. And then we're going to use that image description as our prompt here. And that's going to be the direct prompt to generate the image. We then need to save the output of that image. We're just going to call this variable image. And then we can uh, display everything inside of our display content block. I got a little bit ahead of myself, uh, but that's okay. Sometimes I get too excited. Um, okay, so now we want to display everything. And the way that we do that is we can display media in different kinds of ways. We'll have a full video on all of the media that you can uh, generate using AI, but in this case, we're just going to go over the generate image block. And if we go into quick help, we can find that we have a little snippet here called display an image. Now we can copy this snippet and inside of the configuration of the display content block, we can paste it in and you can see here that there are some double curly braces. Now that indicates that we need to put a variable here. Our variable is called image, so I'm going to copy that and just replace it here. And then this alt text uh, is optional, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. So now we have our cover image being displayed. Let's go ahead and display the blog post. So I'm going to use those double curly braces, and we're simply going to display the blog post using that variable. So just like that, we have finished generating our advanced blog post generator. So just to quickly recap what's happening here, we have a user input. That user input is taking in a topic that is provided by the user. The AI is then generating some ideas and outlining uh, some key topics that we want to cover. We're going to take that and actually generate the entire blog post, and it's going to be about the topic. It's going to cover the key points that the AI came up with that it thought it was important. And then we're using this blog post output to generate an image prompt so that we can then actually generate the image using that image prompt. And then we're combining it all together in this display content block. So let's go ahead and see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. We're going to open the draft agent and we can write about all sorts of things. So I'm going to say uh, F1 cars and tech. 
There's a lot of technology in F1. Let's see what it generates. And this might take uh, a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and skip uh, until uh, its output is complete. All right, we are back and now you can see the final blog post. Now in this case, you can see that we have an image generated and it has our long form blog post all generated for us. And if we look at the debugger, we can take a look at what happens step by step. So let's go ahead and open this up. And the debugger is going to show us everything, all the inputs and outputs. So you can see here the run is started. That's our start block. The user input takes in the topic F1 cars and tech. And then you can see here that it is now coming up with uh, the uh, outline and key points. And you can see the input, the original input. You can see what happens when that topic is replaced with the string. You can see the output of the AI, so it gives us this uh, very lengthy outline for our uh, blog post. And then we're using that inside of the blog post generation block. So you can see the output of that blog post here, and it is following the exact structure that we asked it to follow. It's then taking that blog post, so you can see the blog post here, and if we scroll down, it's generating that image prompt here. So then it's using that image prompt and it's generating our image. And then it's putting all of this together and displaying it to us. So chaining blocks is super important when you're building AI agents. You need to be comfortable with taking the output of one block and using the variable that it generates inside of other blocks downstream in your workflow. This is a core building principle, a fundamental concept that you want to get comfortable with. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.